and we are live. Uh, here we are. It's Carco and Carne doing this from home for now ish. Uh, things are things are creepy. Things are disturbing. Things are a little scary with Delta. Guests don't want to hang out with me in my enclosed car. I don't necessarily want to hang out with them. So I mean, I spent 15 or so months doing this from home every night. I can do it for a few more weeks at least, right? So car con carne, uh, back to quarantine con carne for the time being. But this will change. I am ready to go. I've got all my gear in a backpack ready to, to go mobile with. We'll do it again soon, I swear. Uh, so this podcast, car con carne, uh, this has been running for over seven years. It will continue to run. That said, come Friday, I am launching my second podcast. It will be a sister podcast to Car Con Carne. Uh, details on that will be, they'll spill out on Friday. If you want a sneak peek, go to carconcarne.com. And uh, all the information is really right there in the navigation on carconcarne.com. It's something that I, I feel qualified and excited to do. And uh, that'll start on Friday. Very much looking forward to that. So tonight, we return to Car Con Carne tonight. Oh, man, the mid 90s in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> my guest is already laughing bands across the city were, were just swept up in, in a record company feeding frenzy uh, the likes of which we'd never see again uh, you know the names of some of the bands a handful of them were able to establish a fairly large footprint others have sadly faded into the ether and somewhere closer to the latter of those two distinctions is one of my favorite artists of the era of that era the pulsars this is a band. They got one album on Elmo Sounds. It was the label started by the guys who founded AM Records. And Elmo did okay out of the shoot when they started the label. They, they, one of the first things they released was from a band called Garbage in 1995. And it served to reason that perhaps Pulsars, Dave and Harry Trumpio, would follow down that road to success when their debut came out in 1997. Alas, they only got one album out of Elmo. Uh, the plans for world domination quietly fizzled out at the turn of the century. But they're back, kind of. Lost Transmissions, I'm going to hold up the visual aid here. Lost Transmissions is a collection of song versions that Elmo rejected. There's some unreleased stuff and some general stuff that's been sitting on the proverbial shelf. So joining me tonight is Pulsar Dave Trumpio, a guy whose career as a music producer started before the Pulsars put out their album and has continued to skyrocket ever since. He's worked with Wilco, OK Go, The Mekons, Built to Spill, Pig Face, My Morning Jacket, The Rentals, Granddaddy, and Wayne freaking Kramer. Uh, Dave Trumpio uh, is with us. Good evening. Hey, how you doing? Glad it to be is here. so good to see you, Dave. And before we begin, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit. Maybe, maybe not embarrass you. I, I like to promote what I have coming up on the podcast. So last night on Facebook, I mentioned uh, that you were going to be on the show and I shared submission song on my Facebook page. And I just want to read you some of the responses after I shared the song. Uh, John said, the crazy thing was, or crazy thing is, I was on vacation last month driving through one of the turnpike tunnels near Pittsburgh, PA, and I started hearing Tunnel Song by the Pulsars in my head. Uh, then I thought back to that 90s Chicago scene and bands like the Pulsars, and I was just wondering what became of them. And here I see this post, simply wow. Uh, Joe mm -hmm. says, loved finding this in the local section at Tower Records on Clark. I think I bought that in a certain distant sun CD too, which you produced. Um, Brennan, mm. who is in a fantastic Rockford band called Yes Factory, says pretty cool tune. Never heard of them before. Definitely my kind of jam. That's always exciting when you can turn someone on. To, like when you discover a band that you missed yeah. the first time around. That's that's a you know as a music fan, that, that's a thrill. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mike Fellamley, drummer for the Smoking Popes. They are so great. Das Lifeboat might be my favorite tune of theirs. Mike Fellamley. Uh, a contemporary of Harry Trump, awesome. if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> Chris, Chris says, great band. Thanks for sharing. Didn't realize they have anything else out. And that's why we're doing this podcast episode tonight. Uh, Scott Hess, great album, great band, good guys, triple threat. It's true. Um, and then Rob, Rob Friend says, just went down a Pulsar's rabbit hole. It wasn't too deep, but it was a lot of fun. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> to summarize the Pulsar's, not too deep, but a lot of fun. You can read that any way you want to, Dave. <laughs> well, I mean, it was always kind of our, you know, like fun project that we weren't even, when Harry and I started it, we weren't even thinking we would get very far with it. And it was always just kind of this throwaway, guilty prep pleasures, pop project that we want to start. And at the time, keyboards were really uncool in indie <laughs> rock and in and, and, and the rock scene. I mean, if you were, you know, using keyboards, you were like, making music for raves you know you weren't you weren't 
using a guitar and a keyboard in the same band what are you talking about you know <laughs> so like you know we, we were just like you know f that we're gonna use it and we're going to make some new wave music maybe uh you don't like it or maybe you like it but we like it so we're gonna do it and it's the first band we really had that. We just didn't really care. Like we didn't even try to get gigs. Like I think our first gigs was doing like a Thats After Dark just because we got talked into doing it, you know. Um, and it just kind of like snowballed once people start seeing the band live. And, and I guess it was fresh. It was pretty fresh for the time. It still sounds contemporary and cool. Was it? Was this uh, Ground Zero? The seven inch was the CP. Oh yeah, first? that was one of that was one of our first recordings we ever made. And um, that was more on the kind of lo-fi indie pop side of the fence of what we did. Um, kind of more, uh, just a little more stripped down. I think we recorded a lot of that in my apartment over in Wicker Park, in, even though I had the studio, you know? Uh, but I mean, these songs endure. They're their signature Pulsar songs. I mean, from the beginning, O2 Devil, Silicon Teens. Those are yeah. defining yep. songs for, for the band. Before we talk yeah. about lost transmissions and everything that came before it, do you remember, and I, I'm hoping my memory of this is correct. I, I had to book at Q101 back in the day. We, we booked what we called it a college tour. So we found local bands to play at different college campuses across the city. So I think we had the Cupcakes do a show. I'm sure we had Local H do a show. I'm pretty sure I booked you guys and the Frogs to play the University of Chicago. Does that ring oh, a yeah. bell? Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you remember oh, yeah. that show? I remember that show. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I, I hope I hope your memory is better than Mike's. I, I can't tell the story very well. All I remember is Kurt Vonnegut had a speaking engagement on campus at the same time that you guys were performing in the courtyard. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Do you, uh, well, okay. So the frogs, <laughs> if you've never seen the frogs, I, I can't even begin to start explaining them. They're just, they're a singular yeah. entity. Um, mm -hmm. Dennis, the lead singer. I love the frogs. <laughs> Everyone loves the frogs. And that's such a 90s moment, the frogs. Um, yeah. I think it's Dennis, the lead singer, got a microphone and it was loud. We had amplification in the courtyard. He said, hey, I heard Kurt Vonnegut is speaking today. You know what? Fuck Kurt Vonnegut. Echoed throughout <laughs> all of the University of Chicago. All of Hyde Park heard that. And it was the most cringy, awful, yet kind of awesome thing that could have happened at that moment. Fuck Kurt Vonnegut. It was a frog show. That's a frog show right there. <laughs> <laughs> Bonafide frog show. Uh, before we get into Lost Transmissions, it, it's worth acknowledging that the song Suffocation really should have been a big hit. Listening back to all those songs, Suffocation was so fucking good. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of my favorites from that from that time, yeah. It's, a, it's such a, it's a no-brainer. So Lost Transmissions, these kind of odds and sods from the Pulsars, uh, you say in the accompanying booklet, the songs and versions here are just the tip of the iceberg. Promise, yep. threat, would it, how do we take that? Oh, it's, it's true. I mean, uh, John Henderson um, and I, are our old manager, well, he originally it was supposed to be our label. We were supposed to put out our first stuff on Feel Good All Over, our first full length album. And then uh, when the whole signing things came around, he kind of osmosis in the manager. And so we've been going through, we got all the rights back and it's been forever and, um we got all the rights back and uh we started going through all the stuff that we have and we compiled five or six actual albums worth of stuff um and this being kind of the, the first of of the bunch and the ones that kind of had like the various songs that just weren't going to fit well in like another album we were sequencing um so it's kind of all over the map there's a lot of rejected versions um you know we would go in and make make the version we love and then we'd start turning in the label and they're like oh this isn't rocking enough or you know what is what this isn't gonna work because it's you know this or that and um you know that's that's just kind of the art of making records when you're dealing with a committee and working with a label, yeah. you know. So I mean, but now we can say, hey, this is the version we like, you know, like submission song, the version that's on Lost Submission Transmissions, is you know way more kind of the version that I had in my head, you know, with like the culty group vocal and mm -hmm. just the more kind of weird. I have this like almost like low rider doc 
Dr. Dre, like high pitch, like Moog synthesizer that's mm-hmm. like doing this woo kind of thing. And, you know, there was like, what is this? And like the drums were like a circus drum and Harry playing a snare separately. And it was like, it was pretty for the time it was like pretty weird, you know? And so it just didn't, we turned it in. They're like, uh, survey says, you know, <laughs> we're, we're pulsars. No, <laughs> were you guys like five years too early? It seems that's the history of everything I've done in the music industry. You know, I feel like I'm always off by like five years of forward or behind, not behind. I mean, I'm pretty far behind when I'm behind, but you know, uh, usually pretty far ahead of the curve. And it's funny you say like, I think the songs and we've been going through the archive, there's tons of stuff that just sounds now, you know, um, really surprising. And we're just like, uh, this could kind of come out now let's put it out. You know? Yeah. So we're, we're pretty excited about what, what we have coming as far as the tip of the ice. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> it, it, you talk about all these songs you have just on the shelf, all these potential albums. I mean, I was only aware, I mean, prior to really this conversation, maybe a little bit before I was only aware that you had a second album. Like I, I have, I guess a bootleg copy of the un, unreleased second album. One of the songs from that made it onto Lost Transmissions, at least one, Zero Zero. Zero Zero and Float. Well, Zero Zero is, was a note. Okay, it's it's really gray. Um, there's several different versions of album two. Let me just say that. There's the official L- label version pick songs that we picked with the label. And then there's a whole slew. I'm, I've, I spent almost a year and a half, two years Ever since, like, you know, when our first record came out, we were already writing for the second. That's just the way it works. Right. You know? And um, I mean, we probably, I probably have over a hundred song, like I have at least 80 or so demos that are like pretty complete for the second record. A lot of which just didn't get picked, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and then we have, you know, as far as like content, like we're you're saying, well, how do all these, all these different records, you know, we have, you know, I, we would i was really into like ambient stuff too you know in our early shows even on that seven inch we had two ambient tracks Mm -hmm. so i have a ton of just experimental electronic stuff that just never really floated into the potential releasing of pulsars because they were it was just too weird you know and now it's not weird at all it just sounds like cool like ambient music or cool electronic music that you know people are putting out every day <laughs> well, you, you describe on the Bandcamp page uh these are yeah. songs okay. largely unheard lost tracks from your favorite weirdos it's interesting that you think what you're doing is weird and you call yourselves weirdos i mean the, you're writing pop songs at the end of the yeah. day like programming and bleeps and bloops aside these are straight up pop songs oh yeah i mean i mean the stuff that's been released yeah i mean i'm i i'm really into pop structure and I'm not afraid of a hook and I'm not afraid of repeating myself like 6 million times to beat it through your head. So, you know, like that's something like I played in a lot of more artier bands before Pulsars that were, oh no, like you can't have hooks. It has to be, you know, all these rules and regulations. But now, you know what? I think we're going to just make some hooks, you know? (laughs) So yeah. So the stuff that we've released, yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I don't know where the weirdo stuff comes from, but, but I mean, at the, back in the day, I guess we were, you know, kind of a little bit left field, but, uh, you know, I like to think, um, like in the background, we were always kind of had other plans, you know, mm-hmm. like the record deal side of it was super exciting and fun and, but we were never expecting that, you know, we were just, we were just, you know, we weren't expecting it to be honest. Um, and when it happened, it was just such a great surprise. And I mean, we, lit- we literally felt like we won the lottery. For sure. Well, and what was great, it was encouraging to see, and this was indicative of the time, you really did have the support of the entire Chicago music industry. I mean, whether it's, you know, getting to play the Aragon or whatever. I mean, we were all pulling for you guys. Thank you. But the, That's awesome. some, <laughs> it, it, helps, it was it helps, it worked. <laughs> and, you know, the scene goes through peaks and valleys as far as, you know, community and support go but it really felt like a supportive moment like we were all like oh yeah let, let's let these weirdos <laughs> ascend let's <laughs> let them have their moment yeah i mean we weren't a normal band 
band. I mean, it was just me and Harry, and we, we were really like this is pre laptop bands. Like we had mm-hmm. digital eight tracks on stage. You know, it started with a DAP machine, and then it just grew into digital eight tracks and SVHS decks with a video backup band. We were just kind of going for it, and you know that, you know that was not common back then. You know, um, and you know, so I guess it was fresh. <laughs> and thank you james i mean you were i know you were early you were early with us and you know I, I, i'm a proud owner of the inland empire ep <laughs> oh yeah that well, there you go that that one love yeah. that one i i, yeah, I feel like I, I, when you gave this to me i think this was your only copy of it i hope you have a copy of this sitting somewhere i i do now i do yes. okay good <laughs> Okay. I, no more, no more, no more guilt on my end. I feel, I feel okay about that. Um, so to get this record, to get a lost transmissions record, yeah. which really, I mean, owning it on vinyl to be able to say that I own the pulsars on vinyl. I mean, a, a full album on vinyl is pretty cool. Is this strictly yeah. a band camp thing or is this the pulsars.com? Well, yeah, no, we, we you you can buy through Bandcamp. Um, it is now currently available through various retailers. Um, I mean, I've seen it. It's on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon. But um, uh, we are actually going uh, our label, which is a partnership with John Henderson. Um, we are actually we have distribution in the United States through Austin. Um, through a merchandise merchandising company and we'll be putting a, a website out pretty soon they're just working okay. on that landing page but um yeah you can buy it um i know uh force exposure has it the distributor american distributor and um so it is a it is available like other than Bandcamp, but Bandcamp you get the nice booklet with it it and there's a bunch of bonuses we're going to be you know cultivating as we do this whole um release campaign the best way to buy our stuff is going to be direct through Bandcamp for us you know um and we'll throw in extras for people on the through the band camp i love uh, i love the booklet i mean thank you <laughs> it's basically it starts with essentially the oral history of you guys getting a record deal yeah yeah, it's kind yeah. of talking it's through pretty the process. entertaining. We like to think it's pretty entertaining. I mean, I, I had <laughs> wonderful, wonderful flashbacks, kind of remembering <laughs> that period. There, uh, you know, backstage passes for the Double Door, and there's the uh, there's the Aragon mm-hmm. show where you guys opened for Oasis in 1996. Yeah. Mm-hmm. what a bill! Yeah, Brother, man. brothers top to bottom at that show. <laughs> yeah, Dave Crawford from Toy Dog, he he played with us on that show too. That was a fun show. Um, <laughs> Wait, you play with Blur too? Blur, yeah, yeah. We played. With, we opened up for them on uh, uh, Metro. Metro. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Park Park Life. Park Park Life era, which yeah. is still, I think, my favorite Blur album. Yeah, I love that album. That, I yeah. love that album so much. Mm-hmm. And w- another thing, I love. I mean, I love the behind the scenes stuff. I love the stories. You give all the background and all the songs. Here, and please keep doing this. Yeah. Well, that's our plan. And you know, as far as vinyl goes. Uh, we we plan on reissuing everything on vinyl. So you know there'll be the digitals. We're gonna uh, we're gonna be doing CD and vinyl for every reissue. Um, and each reissue, even like our first record, and when we're uh, gonna do the second record, um, you know we'll we'll the first out record will will have kind of a unique um, packaging, and that will be set set aside from the original release you know um so we're just we're just excited to get stuff out there you know I, i'm assuming final, I'm, final. <laughs> hell yes I, i'm assuming and hoping capsule will make it out sooner than later yeah 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 definitely i mean that was slated for lp2 um and you know now that we kind of like you know we we always were recording i mean here's the thing like People are like, oh, I wonder what happened to the band or what, it, like, it's a shame they haven't done anything. Well, I, I've been doing music all along, you know, I, I've been recording tons of music and Harry and I actually recorded a third album in 2009. So there's a lot of stuff in, in, in what I would consider a fourth album of other recordings we did kind of on and off, you know, but we sat down in 2009 and actually made a record. So, um, so there's, there's stuff there's stuff and there's new stuff that we're planning. So um, we're back. We're doing it. <laughs> I love it. And so the obvious question is, will you play again? Like live performance? I talked to Harry 
yesterday yeah you know we're we're gonna do it we're gonna you know once the covid thing and everybody gets made up on their tours you know i don't want to be competing with a gazillion bands that canceled gazillion shows but yeah i mean that's gonna it's gonna happen we're we're we're, you know we're hoping to get out there and do some shows and um you know it's just it's been a long time coming and like i said like harry and i harry still plays a lot and um you know and i've been just producing a lot of records for different people but you know i made a couple eps in the last six years for for my kind of alter ego victor fiction so i'm doing a full length for that as well so uh we're i'm back i'm ready i want to i want to put out music you know that's that's an exciting part of this is actually just getting this stuff out there you know oh, for sure i, I i'm yeah. telling you when you guys do eventually have that big chicago homecoming show i'm going to be nerding mm-hmm. out so completely hard <laughs> from, from start to finish <laughs> yeah we're oh well, let's let's make it happen <laughs> yes know? well and that see timing wise dave by that point we'll be back in the car and you know yeah. i could feed you guys beforehand we can go for big italian beef so that you guys are kind of bloated and, and lethargic by the time <laughs> you hit the stage well i have i have a strict no eating before a show policy. That, that's I, the right I, move. I, <laughs> well they come to town I, early i don't know I mean, what it is but i just <laughs> No, yeah. I, I makes sense to me. So yeah, get to town early. We'll do it like the night before. We'll plug the show, which will be sold yeah. out. So what's the point? But we'll, we'll we'll talk about the show, and then we'll 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 go to Johnny's. We'll have uh, beef sausage combos and Italian yeah. ice, and it'll oh, be fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the way yeah. to do it. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> well, you know, after 15 months of just a fire hose of bad news being sprayed on us, uh, the return of the Pulsars yeah. is about as good news as I can find. Uh, really excited about this. I'm really excited to see you and know that this is this is just revving right back up. Thanks. We're excited too. All right. Dave Trumpio, stay right there. Uh, thank you for watching or listening, whatever you chose to do for Carcon Carne this week. That's Dave Trumpio. Go support, support the Pulsars. Go backtrack, listen to the old stuff, get the new stuff as it tumbles in. Uh, they're just awesome.